It was an interesting process to judge the poetry competition for Fingal Libraries this year. The theme was There Will Be Time, with its resonances of anxious hesitations and history's evolutions. Inevitably, the unwanted lodger was pervasive. So we had poems of yearning and reassurance, unwanted spaces and suspended motion. Gardens and natural phenomena seemed closer than usual, with an almost unbreathing quality. We also had poems that bypassed the lodger, to do with family, loss, the power of music, perspectives on the working life and obligations. Then there were the elemental philosophical moments, founded in principles of nature and self. In one of his letters, Dylan Thomas was worried that he cared about style rather than people. It's an ironic comment in retrospect, considering that his poems were of such enormous importance to people. It's the inevitable paradox of poetry that what you say is often less important than how you say it. But that's the inherent paradox of language, because we're never sure what comes first, the word or the thing. With Dylan Thomas, it's rather that he cared about how things were done, rather than the fact that they were done. I was noticing the bad grammar in a news report that I was reading the other night and then wondered what kind of human worries about grammar in a time like this. But the quality of our language reflects the quality of our thinking, and many would say that the language creates the thought. Writing an effective poem demands that you examine how you think and how you arrange your language to interrogate the thought. It requires a kind of diligence that you might say is on the spectrum that scientists apply to the problem of survival. I want to thank everyone for putting so much work into their entries. It's not easy to choose only one. If I was to say one thing, it's to remind people that um, end rhyming is not the central meaning of poetry. End rhyming is very hard to get right, actually. It requires a lot of skill. So if in doubt, I would say not so much leave it out, but try a different kind of rhyming, different kind of, of sound connection. Um, I, the other judge was Nadine Ryan, and I'm very glad that she was also there to um, to give her opinion. My own guiding principles when it came to deciding on winners was um, a strong concept, um, a powerful voice, careful structure, and we agreed without argument on the winners. A Tale of Life and Time by Ben Leonard. The early days are soft as the cockerel crows for the first time. All is new. New is the world in which you will later pursue. New are the people you will eagerly view. Life is a wonder and will remain unknown. You must find the meaning of life and time. You must find the truth behind the most mysterious. You must fight the battle of time and prevent from being delirious. Until you can seek out the time for time, everything is new. Man could not comprehend that life is a mystery. Life is new, but the past is not history. You must come to realize that the mind is the life and time. The elder tells a tale of rhyme and everything she has seen, while the ghost tells of time and all he has been. The boys on their bikes are following suit, the dreamers and gazers in chase of pursuit. Time is an emotion that bears all that has and ever will be, like the time that you see a face of anger and hurt, how the buttons that held came loose on your shirt, each disappointing and hopeless as ever still asking, is it now or is it forever? The days rarely come when you're not playing ball, when you don't see the eyes that have witnessed it all. A miracle moment when life is a light, a freestanding mountain, a high-flying kite. There once was a time when the sun rose high and the moon beckoned with curiosity. Now the light stopped dead and the sun said goodbye and now midnight will roar with ferocity. 
the lands that we knew are deserted and clear and the world stopped rotating for us. As the days grow shorter, the creatures don't roar and my buttons won't even cause a fuss. The world that we knew has taken a knee and the feeling of eerie is back. And the clouds that rise are solemn and rare and when not, they will turn the sun black. There was a dream that I had that included the thought of a man with torch in a cave. This person that I dreamt would lead the way and all paths for humanity, lighting the way, clearing our paths and ridding us of insanity. He would be moving the stones and allowing the dog to bark, brightening the question when the answer is dark. I soon came to realise, through my rhythm and rhyme, that deep in my sleep this man is just time. When the glass of water that lays ahead is soured by lemon and lime, there is really no reason to worry, for alas, there will always be time. There Will Be a Time by Grace Anderson There will be a time when all will be done. No river flow, nor vivid glow, or bird whisper through a vacant meadow. There will be a time when no flower will flourish and bloom, nor crop will be harvested in an autumn afternoon. There will be a time when no month or season will be identified or sensed, no morning glow or winter snow, nor crisp icy streets or crunchy coloured leaves, no overflowing fields of daffodils or bees abuzz on shaded petals. There will be a time when every treetop will no longer be in sight, no burning fire will blaze and scorch the forests with a bite. There will be a time when peace will no longer be hidden, every mind will be in accord with every soul. There will be a time when taste will be excused, no mouth-watering goods may be produced. There will be a time when pollution is no longer a question but a vanished memory. All fish will be free of unwanted human waste, and animals will breathe air which is of exceptional quality and taste. There will be a time when no beam of light will appear, all will be dim and slowly but surely fade, vanish, disappear. There will be a time when all will be lost, yet all will be found. Early morning origami. Dandelions hold hands and kiss in my back garden. Let the sun turn their bright heads into spinster clocks. Unlike us, fat bee kings in black and yellow velvet, brocade trimmings of wings come and go like gilt messengers of honeyed love, marrying six flowers an hour, then creep drunk into the long grass. You send me a text, but it's not all of you. I reach down into the damp earth for the last time we touched and wit. Early morning origami is folded away as the sun climbs, so I venture outside in bare feet, squinting inside my papery skin, allow myself when sitting on the front step to watch the buttermilk petals of daffodils pour their moments of sourness away. Their cream borrowed from yesterday evening when the pitcher of the moon was filled to the brim. Blackthorn blossom is confetti sugared in midair, and empty roads are ribboned with birdsong, spread further than I can imagine. Bad news trickles all day, threatening to drown out the distance between the islands of our front doors, the graphs that climb against hope. It is always raining somewhere else. Storm clouds shut up in fresh coffins. The ache in my bones as I still wonder at this upturned blue, riveted along a huge boat of sky. <laughs>